and I am Alan Levine talking to my good dear friend Barbara Ganley, who's in Vermont, and I'm in Canloops. And much of the work I've been doing now um, with these uh, connected courses is related to this idea of um, having students or participants blog in their own spaces and aggregating it into uh, a hub. And it's been successful. A lot of people are interested in it. But you did this way back when, in like 2002. And so I wanted to talk to the mother of the mother blog, if I could call you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I took the grand out of you. <laughs> but like, where did the, I mean, first of all, I mean, always you were a big influence just as an early blogger period um, in those days and probably among the first educational bloggers, you know, Brian Alexander was doing it and the other Brian's. Um, but, but do you remember like, what was the impetus um, to have this idea of um, having students write in their own blogs. Yeah, um, well, being a writing teacher, um, having kids write in their own spaces was something I always did way before the advent of, of, of using tech, computer technology in the classroom. So that that was a very natural thing to have students write in their own spaces. What was different and most exciting to me was the fact that they could do this so that everybody could see it. That is no longer in a private notebook. But what if you shared the entire process? What if you got to have conversations about what you were writing or what you were thinking about writing or the books you were reading or the films we were seeing or the people who came in to give lectures or anything? What if the classroom became an, a, a conversation itself and it didn't matter if we were meeting or not and it didn't matter where anybody was if we could do this. And this particularly became so apparent to me that this was the way to go because the first day of the, fir the first class that I was going to use a blog in, the first day of that class meeting was 9-11. Mm. And it was a first year seminar and our first day of class was 9-11. So, of course, you know, going in and those students so shaken and me so shaken, everybody so confused. The last thing you want to do is send those kids out and go write about this by yourself, go process this by yourself. And it was a course on Ireland. And we were looking at the Irish Troubles through fiction and film. And so it seemed to me the most amazing opportunity for us to see the times that we were living in as the chance to come together and talk about things and make some sense of it and become better writers and thinkers as a result and a real community. But obviously you didn't, you couldn't put 9-11 in, in your schedule. What, what was sort of like the way you were going to um, uh, sell your students on this idea of, of blog writing? Because the, the internet was not nearly as, way, way before social media and people participating online. Live journal maybe, wasn't that what it's called? Mm -hmm. on their own and showing it to us. You know, there were some of these kids, especially first years, the younger kids, the 18-year-olds in 2001. Some of them were messing around and doing some cool stuff. Um, I, sh I, sh I, sh I should add that this is at Middlebury College. I forgot. College. All right. So I was very lucky to start to decide to start with the, the young ones. Because also, first semester of the first year, you're going to do whatever the teacher tells you to do. The seniors, not a chance. But the first years, absolutely. So um, what I, I explained to them that um, one of the incentives that we had for participating on this blog, so we had the mother blog. Everybody had their own individual blogs, but they were linked onto the mother blog. And some of the things that we all had to do were only on the mother blog. We had this, the, the, the main space of the mother blog was our ongoing conversation. And part of the way to get the kids excited about that and, and trusting it is that I happened to have a bunch of friends in Ireland who were the filmmakers and the novelists that we were studying. And I invited them to participate in this course through this vehicle and set them up to be part of it. And that anytime we were, when we got to their novel and we're discussing it, they would be invited in or they could, you know, they could, um, 
leave comments on the kids' papers or something. And I remember that distinctly this one kid who really didn't think this was a great idea at all. He, but he wrote, his, you know, he had a little response to, to a piece of, of, a, of a novel, and the novelist got on and wrote to him. And then somebody else did it about something we read, and I didn't know that writer, so I had invited that site, I had not invited that writer in, but that writer, her, you know, Ireland's a very small school, a really small town, that apparently heard from some, the other guy and got in and started to say, hey, that's a really interesting response you have to that character, and I haven't thought about that before. And so the kids saw that this was authentic, that the kids saw that this wasn't just me giving them more work, or a way that they could make fools out of themselves, but that this was truly exciting. They could converse with the very people they were studying. Um, it doesn't mean that it all went smoothly. There were some kids who were resistant to it, who felt very, they felt that it put, you know, that kids who were not very confident in their writing, it was really hard for them to put their stuff out in public to begin with, but as soon as it, it wasn't associated with grades. It wasn't associated with being corrected, but it was all about participating together and learning together. Then they could slowly find their way. And some kids were the ones who started to get the ideas of this could be a visual medium. We could participate by having stuff that we, we, we added in terms of photographs and video. And other kids were really just the writers. And other kids like to organize things. You know, and so everybody found their way to participate. And I said, I have no idea what we're doing here. I don't have any precedence. I don't know what, I, there's nobody I can look at to, to see how to do this. We're just going to do it. But let's have faith in the fact that maybe, maybe it's going to give us something that we never could do before. And in fact, four of the kids from that first class were so excited about the results that they decided they needed to go to Ireland and shoot web films about the issues we had discussed, but they wanted to do it from their perspective of having been the readers, um, the viewers, and then the correspondents with these um, filmmakers and novelists. And so they, got, they wrote a grant to the college to go in the summer um, to Ireland to shoot web films, and then their idea was to come and work in local elementary schools with the local kids on issues that were important to them about web films and setting up in their fifth grade classroom. This is the student's idea. This is the student's idea. Brilliant. So yeah. They wrote the grant, they got the grant, and they got the grant that I would take them because I was the only one in Ireland. And I was their chauffeur. I drove, they, got, they set up all their, their, they had eight days to, to, to shoot the films, to do the interviews, to do all the stuff they had to do, and then they came back and did all the editing. And they learned how to do Final Cut Pro on their own. And, you know, they, they just figured it out. And, uh, and we did it, and they did it, and they came back, and they worked in the elementary schools, and they set up the first elementary school blogs. I probably, I'm sure, in this state, if not any, almost no. Peter Forbes was doing it in in Holland back then. Um, I think Ewan McIntosh was doing a little bit in Scotland in those days. There were a few. Um, uh, oh, who's the guy who is doing um, Bob um, who, in Maine, who did all the little podcasts with his class? Oh yeah. Grade classroom. So there, you know, there were these little pockets I saw of elementary schools who were playing around with it, but I couldn't see any college. Right. So this was um, this was on movable type was your your platform, right? That the university had in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. How did you um, get this idea that you could um, connect the students' blogs to the mother blog? I mean. really interested in how to connect things. So he actually did some fancy hacking in the background of the, uh, n uh, underneath because you couldn't just naturally link them. He had to actually do some coding under there, mm -hmm. under the hood to make it work. Because I just told him what I wanted. I said, is there a way hmm. that we can connect? 
connect to everybody all the time. And like the and I just called and I said, the mother blog, like the mothership. We we got to have everybody see everybody's work because that's been the problem. Right. Up till now, is kids have been able to. They, they, you know, you and I were talking earlier about ownership and what do you share and what do you, you know, what, what is all this with egos and competition? What, why? Who are you competing against? You're trying to be the best writer you can be, not next to the guy next to you. And the more you help him, the more he help you. And so, but you can't, you can't make that happen if you all have your separate spaces and if all you're doing and your only audience is the teacher. Right, right. I, I sometimes, uh, not that I've ever worked in an art studio, but to me like that, where people are doing individual creative work within proximity, and they're not always like looking and talking, but just being in a room, in this case a virtual room, where people are creating next to you has a, a certain energy to it. Oh, it does. It absolutely does. And, and I brought, I next went to creative writing classes with this, and those kids were all over it because they saw precisely that, the workshop, and that, that the ability, that, because kids who, who take creative writing at Middlebury, they want to be writers. They're sort of self-selected, so they want people to read their stuff. They want their drafts to be looked at. And, and it really opened up the possibility for them to be teaching each other all the way along. It really allowed, you know, people, teachers are always talking about getting off the stage and to the side, but they don't do it. Yeah. They can't do it, maybe. But when you with the mother blog, you totally can do it. Not only can you do it, you, you have to do it. You don't have any choice. Because if it's really working, the class becomes so much more than anything that you have contributed. And, and the, the other thing I always respected about what you did, and, and Jim Groom picked it up, is that you were writing with them. You were doing the always same assignments. Absolutely. I always did the same assignments. I never... I, I, you know, I, I don't understand that, that people feel as though they're above and down the line and they don't need to do this anymore. No, I was one of the community. And if I told them that we were a community of writers, then I had to behave as a member of that community. I couldn't hold myself apart. And sometimes, and you know what, here's this really sweet little story about that, is that, you know, as you know, many, 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 many years later, here I am all very excited because I have a story coming out and I've, I've returned to my fiction writing after all these years. And I have a story that's just come out in the latest issue of Glimmer Train. And it's my students, my old students. You know, and I haven't been at Millbury for ages now, but they're all over it. And I'm getting emails from them and texts and, and it's they're so excited because they, they, they you know, they feel like they were part of the community with me, and, I'm, and they're, they're cheering me on. They, mm. they don't have to have this um, relationship with me that I, I have. Uh, I'm different from. Maybe yes, I've had more experience, but it doesn't mean I'm the best writer in the room. <laughs> but but still, I mean, your your idea kind of inspired you know Gardner and the and the UMW people uh, inspired me, and this is still a thing that that we're trying to inspire other people about the, the same idea of, um, of, of the distributed, collected classroom. Yeah, and I think another piece of that that is really hard for some teachers is the evaluation piece. Because I felt very strongly, and in fact, a lot of this, it was a natural outgrowth, that once you take one step down the road, the whole thing opens up to you. And I think that's one of the reasons people are scared of it, because they kind of see that. Mm -hmm. But um, at the beginning of, the, of every semester and every class that I taught, we established the grading hmm. rubric ourselves together. I said, what, is it, what does excellence look like here? What should it look like? And how will we know when we're in the presence of it? How, how variable were those rubrics that over periods that students came up with? Did they change much? Oh, not really. Not really. <laughs> and I would show them, you know, as as the years went by, I would show them what previous students had did and mm -hmm. done, and, and you know, as a starting point for them, if they want, I say, yeah, I'd be happy to show you what other classes came up with, and and you know, for the first three weeks of any course, the students wanted to throw me out the window for th for abdicating my responsibility or being inept or lazy, <laughs> um, whatever. You know, this was so extraordinarily different from anything that they'd ever experienced before, mm. and they 
they thought it was preposterous. I was the one. What, how did they know? I was the one who was supposed to tell them whether they did it right or not. And I'm going, well, well, well great. What good is that going to do to you? If you have no ability to recognize whether what, what you've done is successful and meets a particular standard that who is setting and who's saying it? So let's you're going to understand far better how to get there if you understand how to set that standard. And so, yes, they, they found it very difficult, but by the end of every semester, every course, they were almost all of them completely excited and enthusiastic about all this. Even kids who hated the blog, mm -hmm. who hated blogging, even now, I still get emails from students from 2001. Wow. Say, Gosh, now I'm a blankety, you know, I'm a coder, or I'm, I, I'm, I work in, in, in digital storytelling, or I do, I, I, I'm a teacher now, and I get it. Yeah. Get it. You know, and I think about, I mean, so much we, we focus on, like, the assessment or figuring out what students got right at the end of the class, and this stuff doesn't happen until years down the line. And, like, we lose track of that. It's all focused on, you know, right there, boom, the class is over. Was it successful? No, you just planted the seeds and, exactly. and let it go. I, I'm, I'm also curious, I mean, probably then, as is now, there's this natural version of people about putting things out that aren't finished or that aren't well-formed, and, um, and it's all focused on the final thing. And um, were your students, were, did you have them, like, reflect, writing about their writing or reflecting on their process? As, as my, okay. very custom, this is how I always put it, that they, they will produce the very best work I've ever, ever seen. I just have to tell them what that is. <laughs> and, and then they will give it to me. And so, of course, I say I have no idea because I'm not them. Um, but so in order to loosen them up from that need to produce the perfect piece and therefore they can't show anything in process, that one of the pieces met meta narratives all the time, reflection, reflection, reflection that was actually a required piece, that they had to do reflection. And they had to do that publicly, too. Mm -hmm. They had to do reflections on their own work and reflections um, on their own interactions. How were they as a community member? How did they, you know, what kind of, were they the quiet one who people came to for this? Or were they the funny one? Who, you know, how did that, so that they got to know themselves, not only as students in this class, but as collaborators in a bigger canvas, you know, in even the biggest canvases of life, um, what could be better than that? Than learning about yourself, both at, you know within this particular context of this subject matter, but all the way out. Because I, it was very clear that these kids had to understand how to be, you know, like uh, um, Barry Wellman talked about the shape shifting portfolio people, and they they had to be flexible and quick. An ability to, to, to morph into lots of different uh, roles and, and, and things to do. And so it, I couldn't just keep them in one. So reflection was incredibly, incredibly important to that. All right. <laughs> it's a beautiful one. Well, thanks for sharing. Because to me, I mean, the sad thing I know is that the blogs were, were lost in the technology shuffle. So. Um, Yeah. Uh, and also, quite frankly, it, the hardest thing was not working with my students. The hardest thing was the academy, hmm. because that they didn't. You know, the, it was very hard for colleagues to understand. It was very hard, and I don't just mean at Middlebury. I mean in the larger world, which is why I and people like me were thrust onto a stage that I wasn't. I didn't want to go around the world talking about this stuff. I just wanted to be doing this stuff. But if we didn't get out there in those early days, then, you know, we couldn't shake it up quite as much how people dare do it as well. I'm glad you went to, to Faculty Academy when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> really, it was. It was one of those special moments in those early days. Yeah. Everybody was. 
that's when I learned how to do Twitter. Back to the academy. <laughs> you taught us all. Yeah, the good old days. They're still here, I think. I'd like to think. Yeah, well, you, you, you and Jim and Gardner and Brian and Scott and all, all of those folks in Zen, you guys are still really doing it and making it the good old days. I, I jumped ship some time ago. To yeah, but you, you set us up, so mutual hugs all around. Thanks a lot. I'm going to turn off the recording. Yeah.